No one's nodding their head. Do people know what mixed media means? You do, you do. Okay, okay, great. So when we say mixed medium or multimedia artists, we're using lots of different tools in one piece of art, right? One piece of work. So what I thought I would do is just sort of go over a lot of the different tools that I use, talk about them and why I use them. Then on the second section, I'm going to show you, or Alex was kind enough to put together a slideshow and you guys can ask me questions about how I produce the work and I can tell you different things that I did to produce the work. Um, so I'm going to go over tools first, um, why I work the way I work. And then I'll do some um, demonstration, which I'll be standing up and I'll be moving my computer over there so you can see me work. But first we're gonna go over tools. Actually, first I should talk about where I went to school. So let's do that for a minute. I started out in um, an all girls Catholic school and I got into an art class just because we had to take an art class and I ended up getting an A. And I didn't know why, I just produced something and the teacher thought it was great. So I brought it home, you know, all excited. I got my first A and it was in art class. My mother went, you didn't do this. I said, yeah, I did. <laughs> and she said, you're kidding. Oh my God. So then I said, mom, should I become an artist? She said, well, maybe. And as things unfolded, uh, when I got to deciding on a high school, um, I, I was in this particular high school where I said I took an art class, but it didn't have a vocational art program where for like two years I could really study art. So I found out about, about a high school, which wasn't the greatest school in Toronto. It was George Vanier Secondary School, but they had a vocational art program where I could actually go and study life drawing, sculpture, pottery, advertising and design, um, and all kinds of other art. And I said, you know, I begged my parents, can I please go to that school? And they said, yes. So I got to go to that school and get a real taste of what art school would be like. And then sadly, my mother passed away when I was 18 years old in my last year of, um, of high school. And my father said, okay, kiddo, you know, you've got to make a decision about college or university or whatever. And I said, okay, I want to go to college and study art. And I wanted to go to OCA and he talked me out of it. He didn't think there was a lot of money in fine arts. Boy, was he wrong. He sent me to, we agreed on uh, graphic design. So I studied graphic design for three years, um, graduated and went on to work as a graphic artist and paste up artist and typesetter in printing shops. But through that, I freelanced and did some um, album covers or friends of mine that were musicians. I was also a singer part-time, so I knew a lot of musicians. Um, I did some packaging design and stuff like that on the side, side gigs. Then I was diagnosed with fibromyalgia, which was a real drag, fibromyalgia and arthritis. And the doctor told me, you will not be able to work full-time anymore. You can work part-time. And I thought, okay, I'll be a part-time artist. That's what I'm gonna dedicate the rest of my life to. So I went back as an adult to uh, Central Tech and I studied fine arts again for three years. So again, it was sculpture, life drawing, painting, uh, still life drawing, mixed media, printmaking, you name it, we did it. And I was just running around that school like a mad woman, um, learning as much as I could. And I loved it. And I knew that that's, that's what I was going to do till the day I and stop breathing. So I am a mixed medium artist and that's what I do. So that's a little bit about me. Please, you guys feel free to interrupt while I'm going through tools and talking about my work. Please feel free to interrupt and ask me a question because if you save it to later, you might forget it. And I don't mind interruptions at all. I'm cool with that. So I'm gonna go through tools now. And then I'll do some demo. Oh, sorry. Then I'll talk about some of my work. I'll show you my work. And then we will, I will do some of the demonstration. 
using the tools that I've talked about. So let's get started with that. Okay. Obviously, most of us start with what? A pencil. All kinds of different pencils are great to have, right? And what's this thing? An eraser. You can do incredible artwork with just pencils and erasers. They make all kinds of different pencils that are very, very dark and thick. Um, and obviously fine pencils like we use to write with, which are usually just regular HB pencils, not as dark, they're quite, quite fine. Now, in art school, one of the first things you learn is you never use a sharpener. We're not even allowed to buy one in art school. You must learn to sharpen your pencils with a knife, an X-Acto knife, so that you have a nice long edge like that. And you can never hold a pencil like a pencil. You're not allowed. You hold a pencil like this. So that you're always working with the side of the pencil. If you want to work with the front of the pencil, you're kind of working that way. So I'm teaching you lots of tricks and tips as we go along, okay? So pencils of all different kinds are always great to pick up and obviously erasers. I do own a, <laughs> I do own a sharpener because I work with pencil crayons too and sometimes it's just quicker to, to sharpen your pencil crayons, right? Okay. Another great tool to have, and I did not accumulate all these tools in five minutes. I got them over time. I learned how to use them and collected these tools over time. This is a graphite stick. This is a wonderful thing because you can break it and work sideways or work really sideways to get tone. So a graphite stick is something that's really great to have. My absolute favorite tool, and most artists will say the same thing, I think, is good old charcoal, charcoal pencils and pieces of charcoal. They come usually in white, brown and black and charcoal pencils. Oh, sorry, charcoal pencils, I'm holding up the wrong thing. So you wanna always have some of that. Now, along with that, you can get colored charcoal, right? Colored chalk charcoal. Little box of a couple of colors is great to have in your little package of stuff because often chalk, um, colored chalk, you're going to use at the very end of a piece. But charcoal, your good black charcoal, you're going to use throughout an entire piece usually. And it mixes really well with acrylic paint. I primarily use acrylic. The next Tool that you're really going to want to have in your little toolbox is China pencil. You remember the old pencils where you pull down the little piece of string and you, yeah, these are China pencils. They are absolutely fabulous. They're more oily contact, um, oily type um, uh, medium, but they're great for drawing and scribbling with. They're wonderful. Obviously, colored pencil crayons which you can draw with and color with and scribble, scratch with, do all kinds of stuff with. Now, another really fun tool, and you're gonna say, what? Crayons. Go to the dollar store and pick up a bunch of crayons. They're fantastic for mixed media work. And I'll show you in a minute why, or in a few minutes why. The next tools that we use a lot is markers. The thicker, the better. So you can make some really fun marks. Now, these are not cheap. I'll tell you that right now. But it's nice to have at least one really thick, good, fun marker to make marks with. Next in my little toolbox is colored watercolor crayons. They're also a little bit costly, but they are wonderful because you can color with them just like a crayon and then grab a paintbrush and all of a sudden you'll see that they drip or they puddle with some color so they're really fun to have too if i'm going too fast you guys you tell me 
Jan, I'm just going to ask the difference between a watercolor pencil and a watercolor crayon, except I think you would just get more out of the crayon at a time. You will get more out of the crayon. Yes. Water watercolor pencil crayons, I find you don't get as much color. You just don't get as much density of color also. But they're good. I just don't use them. Yeah. But some people love them. So I wouldn't rule it out. Um, often the last thing I'll use on a piece is oil pastel. Now, why would I say something like that? Because if you're going to use oil on all of your acrylic based type work, if you don't like the piece and you want to gesso the whole thing and start again, it can lift if you've got anything oil based on your piece of work. So you want to make sure your piece is absolutely finished and you love it before you go any, anywhere near oil pastel. So this is the last thing you would put on your piece of work. Now I'm going to talk about the fun and funky tools that a lot of us artists use that we don't tell people about. We keep it a secret. I don't know quite why we do that, but I'm going to tell you the fun secret. Okay, never be afraid to attach a paintbrush, a pencil, a marker, a piece of charcoal to a long stick. This happens to be a knitting needle. Now, the reason you're doing that is because you're getting distance from your work, less control so that you're not up close and being sort of really anal. You're kind of far back and just letting things happen. One of the biggest focuses in making mixed medium abstract art is letting go, making a mess, going back in with white paint, going back in with black paint, going back in with white paint. You can always cover it up. The, one of the main goals is making a mess. So making ugly art until it starts to speak to you and becomes beautiful and you like it. And then all of a sudden it takes on a life of its own. So don't be afraid to make ugly art. I want to share one other thing. And that is I never work on one piece at a time. I work on two, three or four pieces all at a time. Why do I do that? So that nothing is precious. I'm just making a mess, I'm experimenting, I'm playing, and all of a sudden it'll take on a life of its own, I can guarantee you. Out of four pieces, one of them you're gonna like. And the rest you'll keep, never throw a piece away. Revisit it later, because you might wanna go back in and fix and change things. Okay, where did I end up? Oh yeah, never be afraid to make a long tool. Okay. Another amazing tool, dried flowers. You dip a dried flower in some black paint and then do some abstract scribbling with a dried flower. You are going to be amazed at some of the stuff you'll see. Pick up twigs in the park. I say that because this is another great tool that I made for myself. It's a bunch of twigs taped together with all these fun little edges and I dip it in the paint and I might paint or scribble with this tool also. Don't be afraid to pick up nice fun sponge brushes that you can dip in water and throw paint around and just make a mess, right? Obviously, paint brushes. Um, you're gonna wanna have at least one good wide paintbrush like a house house painting type paintbrush so you can make a big thick stroke if you're in the mood for that and then go in with smaller brushes maybe do some fine work at the end with a pointy fine brush middle size brushes are always good <laughs> you're going to want a screwdriver why would you want a screwdriver that's a crazy thing to have right a, a long screwdriver or a small screwdriver 
is amazing for scratches. Going in and scratching to get texture and different stuff going on. So have something that's sharp. I say a screwdriver because it's not like a knife where you could actually hurt yourself. A screwdriver is a lot, a lot easier to have around. Don't throw away old paintbrushes, toothbrushes, sorry. They're great to flatter, flatter paint or paint with. They're wonderful. You can always buy paint pens. These are acrylic paint pens that you can use often near the end of a piece. They do clog up and dry up and they get frustrating. Don't be afraid to dump them in water and get them going again, you know? Don't keep them in the water, but dump them in water and get them going again. But they can be, they can kind of clog up, they can get frustrating. I usually have a black one and a white one around, not usually colored ones, because they're again, not cheap. But you can hear them clicking. There's some little ball bearings, I think, in there that just keep the paint kind of flowing. Um, you might want to have rollers um, and hard rollers. I have a hard roller around here somewhere. I don't know where, but soft rollers and hard rollers because you may want to apply some paint that way. You want to have masking tape around because sometimes you might want to mask things off on your paper or canvas. Um, I don't necessarily like straight edges. I usually will take a piece of tape and I'll rip it slowly down so it's a kind of a jagged edge. I'm not one for straight edges. Some pieces I, I go with straight edges, but not often. Um, this is an amazing little tool. You can find these in art supply stores. Um, this you can mix up paint in, add some water so that it's runny. Obviously it's acrylic paint and get it runny and mushy and you can draw and paint with it just by squeezing it. So these wonderful little um, paint, what would you call them? Squeeze tubes, yeah, great word, great word. Now, if you're ever in the dollar store and you're kind of wandering around and you see a whole bunch of kitchen utensils that are made of silicone, grab them. This is a tool that I use 24 seven, right on Ava, 24 seven. I, it had a wooden thing to it. I just ripped it right out. Um, you can put some paint on the side of this and just go to town on your canvas. You can scratch and scrape with it. You can do a lot of work with a silicone um, piece of, I think it's a spatula, top end of a spatula. They're amazing. A credit card, an old credit card is also another amazing thing to have around. You're gonna wanna have, if you're gonna get into mixed media, you're gonna wanna have one of these type tools around, plastic or metal, doesn't matter. Um, I pretty much only use it for digging out some paint to put on a palette. I really don't use this that much, but a lot of painters work with this alone. I'm, I'm not one of them, but a lot of people do. A lot of people use them. Obviously you wanna have a jug of water or usually I'll use a great big bowl of water because I'm using lots of different brushes and I've got everything in the water. Because I'm kind of small in here today, when I do the demo, um, I've kept things as small as I can so that you can see them. There's Anastasia, hi girlfriend. Okay. Um, Hi, oh. I just sent you a quick note in the event because you said you wanted me to um, have a little input there. Um, so, or is that something different? Um, no, it's something different, but I'll ask you afterwards. Or I'll ask you, yeah, as we come near the end, I'll ask you. Okay. Um, okay. Also, a spray bottle you might want to have around to cool yourself off because you'll be working hard. And also to spray water on your piece. I want to let you know that I primarily work on paper, not expensive paper. I can just run over and get some um, cardstock, bristol board type paper. I'll use the, the matte paper and I will gesso it. And it turns into almost like a beautiful leather. It's just fabulous. 
I hardly buy white paint. I usually work with gesso. Gesso, gesso, gesso. What is gesso? It's just white paint kind of with a little bit of a gravel to it that kind of primes a canvas or a paper. So you can literally work in a sketchbook of multimedia paper, gesso all your sheets and just make fantastic, beautiful pieces of art that come out later almost feeling like leather. Just fantastic. This is one of the best things you can have in your, in your little kit of surprises and really just use it like it's white paint. Um, have I forgotten anything? Oh, I will talk a little bit about texture mediums. This is getting a little bit uh, technical, 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 but you can buy mediums that are uh, sandy and gritty that you can put on canvas and let it dry and it'll give you the text, different textures. Now, what's better than that? I'm about to tell you. Making ugly art, hating it, covering it up, doing another painting, hating that, covering it up again. You're gonna get all these automatic textures that you didn't even plan for. Don't be afraid ever to start a piece of work, you've gessoed it, and then you say to yourself, okay, I want this piece to be textural, so I'm gonna go in and stick on a whole bunch of paper. Sprinkle up the paper, just stick it on like you're making, like you're starting out making a piece of collage art. Let it all dry and set up. You can gesso over top of that one more time. And then your piece is ready. It's textured and it's kind of fun. And then you can get in there and do what you want. I'm gonna teach you some techniques. I could teach you techniques for 17 hours, literally. <laughs> But today we have a couple hours, so I'm going to teach you what I can. I want to show you one more funny tool at the dollar store. This great thing, this great little box scratcher that you use in the bathroom. It is that wonderful, um, um, I guess it's called Lufa or Lufa. Lufa sea sponge or something. Anyway, but look at that pattern. Imagine dipping that into paint and then just painting with this. Very fun tool. So think outside of the box if you're going to get involved in doing some mixed media art. Think of things around your house or your bathroom or your kitchen that you might want to use, especially lids of things. You can dip lids into paint and then, you know, use them as circles on your, on your piece of work. Anything you can think of, use it. So get creative. Don't be afraid to get in there with your hands. Acrylic paint isn't gonna hurt you, you just have to wash your hands afterwards, right? Sometimes I'll use my feet. Sometimes I'll use my hair. My hair gets in there a lot. Okay, now I wanna talk a little bit about line. We're, we're doing expressive work, right? We're doing expressive um, mark making. So one of the best things you can come up with for yourself is a bunch of different emotions that you can think of like confused, calm, angry, sad, serene, playful, silly, um, dancing, fluid, flowing, jumpy, tired, sleepy, come up with a bunch of emotions and what those lines might look like, what those marks might look like, what might confusion look like. So you can simply pick up a pencil or a pencil crayon and just do kind of a, a, a diagram for yourself of words and then what that line or scribble might look like if it's angry or if it's happy or playful or, and just think about how it might curve or how it might be angry and scruffy or, you know, whatever, and get sort of a lexicon of mark making for yourself. Okay, let me see what else I wanna talk. Oh, don't ever be afraid. <laughs> okay, 
most artists won't tell you this, but I'm going to tell you, don't ever be afraid to rip a piece of your work. Now, I said earlier, never throw away a piece of work, and I meant it. If it's an ugly piece of art, just set it aside, visit it later. You can get it out later and maybe revisit it, go back in with black and white, go back in with mark making later. Don't throw anything away. But if you have a piece of art and you say to yourself, I want to juxtapose, what does juxtapose mean? People know what that word means? You know what that means? Okay. If you want to juxtapose two images, you might want to rip a piece of art in, take a third of it off or something, rip another piece of art and put two together as a composition that can be absolutely mind blowing. So something that's really busy and maybe a ripped picture of a bowl or something. So something really creative and something very, um, um plain and one image so never be afraid to do things like that too okay now um as i said i'm gonna i'm gonna say it one more time we're playing we're experimenting nothing is precious we can always cover it up and go in again and start all over remember that gesso or white paint is your best friend don't worry about making ugly art. The goal right now is to make ugly art until it turns, until all of a sudden you make a move or a mark and you go, oh, that's beautiful. I want to keep that. And then you go around it and create something fantastic. So never be afraid of making a mess. You can always cover it up. Okay. Okay. Good. So the goal is making ugly art. Got that? Good. Don't forget it. Okay, now we're probably gonna go through the slideshow for a little while. And this is where you guys can ask me questions, how I did this or how I did that or how I got this effect or that effect. Yeah. Okay. Here are two of my pieces. You guys feel free to unmute. They are amazing. They're oh, so beautiful. Thank you so much. <laughs> I can tell you um, that the piece on the, the red piece, the red piece, when I did that piece, I'll tell you exactly how it happened. I gessoed a piece of paper and I had it up on my foam core board, which you'll, you'll see shortly. I was sitting on my sofa watching a TV show and I thought, I want to produce a piece with red and black and gray and, and just go to town. And literally, ladies, I got, and gentlemen, I got up and just started working with my thick marker. And that piece happened like in probably half an hour. And I stepped away from it. Honestly, I have to tell you the truth. I felt like I wasn't even in the room. I stepped back from it and went, oh my God, I've arrived. And I was 59 years old. Like I just did that piece. No, I was probably 58. I probably did that piece last year. I stepped away from that piece and said, oh my God, I've arrived. I have wanted my whole life to create a piece like that red piece. And the tears just started coming down my face. I thought, oh my God, I finally, I feel like an abstract artist now. Yeah. And I had struggled and struggled and struggled to become a true abstract artist. And that was the day it happened. And it literally floored me. I was crying and I felt like I wasn't even there for it. <laughs> so that is a particular piece that I will probably never sell ever uh, it's going to be an artist collection because of that moment for me, for whatever reason, I fell in love with that piece. And I don't fall in love with my pieces, believe me. Okay, so the one on the, the gray and brown, that is a piece that's mostly collage, um, acrylic, black, gray, white, acrylic. 
a little bit of um, texture medium. So I might've put on a bit of sandy kind of texture medium that's mostly ripped up brown paper, um, some, some marker for the fine lines, some thicker marker for that sort of scribble in the center there, a bit of ink that I might've added a bit of water to. And that piece again, that piece took probably a week because it was a lot of gluing and little pieces of paper. And as soon as I put it on Facebook, uh, it was sold. <laughs> <laughs> so that piece is um, three feet by three feet and it's hanging above my friend's fireplace. Yes, it's, it's one of my favorites. When I walk in the room and see it live, I go, oh yeah, that's me. <laughs> okay, next slide. Great, thanks Alex. Okay, these are pieces that I recently did uh, during pandemic. And they are pieces of paper, gessoed, and then painted black, scratched into, and then areas painted white, and then scratched into, and then just going from there. And some collage work. Um, also, on the piece on the right, um, there is a lot of... Um, tissue paper collage added into that and kind of wrinkled up tissue paper added into that also. Um, these two pieces are being uh, mounted for art shows that I'm currently doing. Um, any other question? Oh, there's a bit of chalk on these, drip water on it and letting the water kind of cool and then wiping it off uh, to create the dot and stuff in the black areas uh, and, and graphite, a lot of pencil. I love just scribbling and scratching with graphite and a lot of using my screwdriver, scratching, scribbling, yeah. Okay, next slide, thanks Alex. Oh boy, again, <laughs> again, the piece on the right, uh, left, sorry, is a piece that is three feet by three feet. My sister purchased it and it is hanging above her bed. <laughs> mm -hmm. This giant size piece. Again, it was created pretty much the way I described a huge piece of board this time, gessoed, then painted black, scratched into, then a a piece of masking tape, then a piece painted white, scratched into, laid down on the floor, water sort of put on it, and then the whole thing dried off. Then when all that dried, went in with some scumbling paint, which is sort of dry brushing with paint colors like blues and greens and golds, and then adding on some um, tissue paper, um, collage, and then going in with a tool similar to something like this to make the circles. I actually, the way I made those white circles was with a dried flower dipped in white paint. And then adding some more dots and stuff, maybe with my white paint pen. Um, I have a question, uh, sure. Jen. In uh, you know when you talked about putting the black layer first yes. and then the white layer on top of it, is there gesso in between? Did you stop okay. gesso okay. and then go forward, or did you just put the white on top? Okay, you're starting with a white piece of paper. Yeah. You're gessoing that white piece of paper. Right. And it's often good to gesso in two different directions. Uh huh. So gesso that way gesso again that way to get sort of a real textural. Then you paint black, then you scratch. No okay. gesso in between. You just put the white on. The white might be gesso. If you're not using white paint, yeah. it might be gesso. Yeah. Okay. All right. Okay. okay. Got it. Okay. Any other questions? I just would like to, am I being heard? Am I? Yes. You sure are, Lynn. I can hear you. I, I just wanted to 
reassure you. I, I somebody said if she's so good, why you know she shouldn't be sharing, etc. I said to this person, she has a sense of composition that mm -hmm. I don't believe a person can be taught. I mean, you have an eye that never fails you, as far mm -hmm. as I can tell. Lynn, what a compliment to give an artist. Well, <laughs> that is so humbling. Right. Like, just... Oh my God. Oh my God. I I don't know um, why, I don't know why that is, right? I I see I see something that I like and I go from there. But you develop an eye from looking at tons of art all the time, right? You yeah. develop an eye, you develop, oh, I like that, or I like that, or I like that. Oh, there's someone in the waiting room, Dominique. <laughs> okay, good. Um, yeah, you kind of develop an eye for what you like. When I first started out, of course, I was drawing people's faces and bowls of fruit, and, and that was so boring for me. It didn't challenge me to become an abstract artist. Abstract art to me was so much more difficult because you're making such a mess. And how do you make it come to something that's beautiful? It takes time. It takes a little bit of time going in and out and revisiting a piece. Now, the piece on the left, uh, sorry, on the right, is just a sketchbook. I just took a sketchbook with me somewhere, probably to a coffee shop, took a couple of paint, co paint colors with me, a little palette probably, and brought my china marker, some pencils and charcoal, um, some paint, no doubt I brought this with me and just sat there and made a mess. And I just sewed that piece, I'm sure, before I left my house. And, and that's it. And that's just from sitting and making a mess in a coffee shop. One of my best pieces that I sold actually, I made in a coffee shop and someone spilt coffee all over it. And they were so worried that I was gonna be mad. I said, oh my God, you made it great. It made it better. <laughs> it made it better. Never be afraid to paint with coffee, food, um, tea bags, tea, salt, um, sugar, um, mustard, soy sauce, get in there, experiment. It's all about experimenting. There's a particular artist right now and she uses acrylic, graphite and food. That's all she uses. Her canvases are huge. She uses soy sauce, um, beet juice, uh, all kinds of stuff and very little acrylic paint. Most of her stuff is food. No joke, no joke. Okay, next slide. Like I said, guys, don't be afraid to interrupt. Okay, so this is my sketchbook again. This particular piece on the left is mostly paint, oil pastel, china pencil, graphite, and probably a bit of charcoal. And it's still in the process, it's not finished. So the piece on the left I would call ugly art because I'm gonna revisit that with white paint I'm gonna revisit that. I might cover it right up and start over again or cover up just parts of it. Unmute Lynn. You guys can stay on mute if you want, it's cool. Unmute Lynn, I can't hear you. Oh, okay. I'm sorry, I'm sorry. Oh, that's okay. It's totally off the wall comment, but what struck me immediately was it's the colors of the Ukrainian flag and that oh you should paint over it. You should build with that in mind. I don't know. You know, it, but thanks, don't, don't thanks, cover Lynn. It. thanks Lynn, because I've been, you know, obviously saying tons of prayers for those poor people. And I, I would love to do a piece in tribute to my God, what they're going through is just astronomical. Um, but thanks for pointing that out. Thanks for pointing that out. The piece on the right is soy sauce. Soy sauce. Soy sauce. So most of that piece that you're looking at on the right is marker, a thick marker, pencil crayon, black pencil crayon, graphite, 
a little bit of paint, black paint, and this particular tool for making some of the um, dots and scribbles, some pencil crayon, and all of that beige color that you're seeing is soy sauce <laughs> that I just dribbled all over the place. I'd if like that to comment. Sure. Uh, Jan, I'd like to comment sure. about the other painting that you this said one? was ugly. I keep seeing it as a human with a cape. Oh, okay. I see what you're saying. Yeah. yeah. That's why I wondered why. And if you went further with that, you could have the flag of Ukraine and a person's face, the black face of war. Wow. Wow. I see what you're seeing. That's beautiful. Yeah. <laughs> That's powerful. That is very powerful. Thanks for pointing that out, Ava. Okay, no problem. Yeah, I appreciate that. My God, especially mm -hmm. with what's going on right now. Um, uh, what was I going to say about the piece on the right? Oh, yeah. Not, neither one of these pieces are finished. So I just want to uh, say that again. I'm going to be revisiting both of these. So they will change. You'll see the change, probably. <laughs> Hopefully. Okay, next slide. Again, sketchbook pieces. Um, the one on the right is finished and it's going to be mounted soon. Um, it is paint, pastel, chalk pastel, graphite, gesso, uh, revisiting, going in and out several times. There's a lot underneath there, a really ugly painting underneath there. <laughs> But I went in and out and in and out several times on that one until I finally went, okay, I like this composition and stop it. The one on the left, I don't like it at all. Not even a little bit. And that's why I say it's nowhere near finished. It's just a piece that started. I call it, I call most of my pieces starts. They're just starts. And then they're finished when they sort of speak to me and say, I'm done. So the piece on the left to me is nowhere near finished. It's, I'm going to go in and out with black and white and more scribbles and probably different colors and it might completely change. Next slide. And do you tend to oh, gesso all your sketchbook pages before you start? Do I tend to gesso? Yes. Yeah. So okay. that it is primed and has some texture to it. Yes. Um, the piece on the right I'll talk about first because um, it was really like, I was sitting in a coffee shop again one day and I ordered a nice chamomile tea and I was sitting there and I said, okay, I just need to loosen up today. Like I was all feeling, I don't know what, I just wanted to loosen up and just color like a kid. So I just started doodling and coloring like a kid. Then I started filling things in with watercolor crayons. And then I had a bit of water and a paintbrush beside me and I started adding some water to it. Then I went in with some um, China marker, white and black, and did some of the, the white marks and black marks. And I know I went in with a little bit of pencil crayon also. Yeah, beautiful. Just have fun, you guys. Just play. All of a sudden, you create these masterpieces that you can't believe you you did. Like you just step back and go, "Oh my god!" You're so busy in there that you don't realize until you step back and look at something. That's another reason why I often will just make a mess and then go sit on the sofa. I'll make a mess and then go sit down and watch a show. And it's right beside me near the TV. And I'm looking at it and I'm going, Ugh. you know, but I'm watching my TV show and I'm kind of getting away from it. And then I glance over at it and I'll say, I know what it needs. And I'll get up and make a move or I'll get up and do something. But all my tools are usually all kind of there. So I can grab something and go, I know what this needs. It needs this. Or I want to do that or, okay. So don't be afraid to make a mess. It's all about experimenting. The piece on the right I want to talk about because it's a diptych. I'm sorry, the, the piece that goes beside it is not with it. I forgot to send a picture to Alex. That 
particular piece was a piece of paper, gessoed. Then I stood up for whatever reason with a thick black brush and I made that black stroke. Three quarter, a quarter of the way down the page, right? This, that black stroke. And because it's cut in half, it was kind of a circle stroke. And I loved it. I loved that particular black stroke that I made with a thick paintbrush. From there, I went in with a lot of, again, um, watercolor crayons, some acrylic paint, um, my beloved charcoal, and my beloved china pencil, my beloved graphite, and glue, um, and uh, threw in some pieces of paper, uh, colored paper, and some pieces of, um, what's that stuff called again? Um, oh, I'm going to forget the word for it. The stuff you wrap presents with? No. Tissue paper. <laughs> Tissue paper. Thanks, guys. It, it just left. It was, a blonde moment. it was a blonde moment or a gray moment, one of the other. <laughs> so that's how that was created, like literally just from playing, playing with a thick paintbrush or playing, just playing. Oh, and don't be afraid to play with sponges also, like actual sponges that you might rip up and rip apart. Makeup sponges, all kinds of stuff like that. Okay, next slide. Oh God, are these fun or are these fun? The the piece, on the, right, the piece on the right is, sorry, the piece on the left is sold. It's hanging in a friend's dining room. Um, it is a piece that was primarily done with this tool. Credit card. Almost the entire piece was done with this tool. And probably my uh, beloved China marker a bit of graphite and gesso, 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 and this tool again. This is pretty much the tool that created both of those pieces and a bit of China marker scribbling and some scratching probably too. So that's all acrylic paint, gesso, China marker, and this wonderful tool to spread the paint around with. Okay, next slide. Oh boy, sketchbook. Ah, the piece on the left is sold. It was created in my sketchbook with no gesso. So just on paper, um, I just did some scribbling with a pencil. Took some pencil crayons and started coloring some areas. Then I took my white, no, wait a second, how did I do the white? Give me a second, I have to remember. Right, then I took my white acrylic pen, paint pen, and I colored in some areas with white paint pen. And then I went back in with graphite. So you can see the difference on a piece of paper that's not gessoed and then a piece of paper that is gessoed. So the piece on the right is totally scribbling and scratching with a bunch of different um, things. So watered down acrylic paint, uh, china marker, black pencil crayon, graphite stick, graphite pencils, pencil crayon, I said, yes, what else? Oh, the good old screwdriver, scratching into the paint. No doubt I used this tool for the red and the blue. I just made a mess. Um, and I believe at the very end of that piece, I went in with some oil pastel because I knew it wasn't going anywhere. I wasn't gonna put gesso over top of it, but I loved it. So I'm sure at the end, I went in with some, some oil pastel. 
Okay, next slide. Oh, this is the last slide, guys. Then it's demo or break time and then demo. Okay, I have to ask you something, Jen. Sure, You're going to love this. I am on... I am on the committee of the Don Valley Art Club to choose artists to teach workshops, meaning you get paid, or to give a presentation. I would like your information, your data. We are looking for abstract artists, and we will. I will highly recommend you. You're trying to make me cry, aren't I you? Need you. Oh, I'm sorry. <laughs> did, did I make you cry? I'm on the committee. I mean, for crying out loud, I'm going to pr I present you. Uh, you got so me, I girl. Need your, I need your what? You got me. <laughs> okay, I need your information. Uh, and I need your website. So do you need mine? What, how do we need to do this? Because I'm going to send it to the committee. I'm going to put my information. And by the way, can you teach Can you teach pets? Because we're looking for somebody to paint pets. Well, paint okay. pets? Anyhow. Paint pets? Yeah, we're into pets right now. Oh, I am so sorry. I know that I'm an abstract artist. And of course, no, 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 but we also are doing abstract. No, no, that's okay. I'm just kidding. Um, okay. We're doing abstract artists and I'm looking for somebody and you would fit the bill. So do you have an email and a website and you mentioned it and can you send it to me and I'll I pass send, it on? And I'll, I'll send you absolutely everything you need to know. I will send you everything. Okay, I'll put it yeah. in the chat. Okay. Is that well, okay? Give me your right. email and then I will send everything you need. Yes, I will. Oh my God, you got me good. Okay. Alex, why don't you play a little matchmaker on that for us? I am so proud of you both, all of you, for getting some gigs out of this thing. That is just the best. Adam. Come on, I can't, kids. I just, Come I on, can't you kids. Thank, I can't thank you guys enough. How could I ever thank you guys enough? Keep and I'm never going to let you forget that I want a show for a whole month at that clubhouse. You know that, right? I'm going to. I put it in my grant. You're on the paperwork now, Jen. Come on. <laughs> Already all mounting all the work for the walls. Like I'm telling you. Okay, now that you've got me crying, let's take a break. Everybody, get a cup of tea or some water or a snack or everything. Take five or ten, even fifteen minutes, because I'm going to do a demo. And anything that I don't demo, you can remind me and I will show you how to use that particular technique or tool or whatever. I'm happy to share my secrets. Okay, guys, so go have a nice break and we'll come back. Okay. Okay, is everybody back? Everyone's back. One, I, I'm back. I'm going to ask one quick question. Sure. I'm always concerned about um, rinsing out brushes. Now I'm thinking about gesso. Like, is there any way that would clog the drain? Okay. Uh, the person here who is involved in the environment, yes, it will. So what you need to do is to buy cat litter. And you actually, once you, and you, and you put obviously the, you dump the acrylic paint into the ac acrylic, into the uh, cat litter. I have it in a, one of those plastic containers. And then of course I take a yogurt container and fill that up with a spoon and throw it into the garbage recycle. Do not throw it down the sink. Okay. Good luck and thanks, Ava. I'm a bad girl because I sometimes do put it down the drain. So I'll stop doing that. Thank you for the learning. Thank you. Oh, I need to say one more thing. I've just sent a recommendation to the Don Valley Art Club. We're having an art sale and I'm asking them to ask artists to put aside some money, whatever the sale is, for a fundraiser for the Ukraine. We'll see what happens. Perfect, great. Okay, is everybody pretty ready to start watching a demo? Is everybody ready to see how a semi-professional artist does this? How she makes a mess? Here we go. She stands up. <laughs> okay. You can see this from the very beginning. So I'm looking at white pieces of paper. It is not white or white sand. Oh my God, white sand. We can't really hear you very well, Gina. Can't hear. Oh, that's, what I was afraid of. that's what I was afraid of. Can you hear me better on this side? Yes. Okay, I'm going to stand over here and talk. 
Okay. So I'll run over there and grab utensils, but I'll stand over here on this side to do the demo. So you can hear me, right? Right. Okay, good. And I'll try and talk as loud as I can. Okay, so I was talking about the fact that we're looking at blank pieces of paper and most artists hate the white blank piece of paper, right? Or the blank canvas. So we call this activating the canvas. And what we do is we always start with graphite, right? A pencil. Now, a regular HB pencil is not something I would start with. I would probably start with like an HB, which is a little bit darker. And I'm just gonna go in and activate the canvas. I'm not gonna think, I have no preconceived idea of what I'm gonna create today. I'm making a mess, I'm experimenting, and I'm just playing and having fun, okay? So I'm gonna go in with a pencil. And I'm just making marks. I might pay attention, I might not. I might change hands. I'm right-handed, so I'm putting it in my left hand. I just activated the canvas. I wasn't paying attention. I don't really care what's on there right now. It might all get covered up. I just activated it. There's something there. There's something to look at. I may do a little more. Okay. I'm done. Now, I immediately go in and get my China marker, my favorite mm, tool. Why do I love this? Because you'll see why. Now I'm gonna go on the other side there and I'm gonna start to make some marks that I feel are playful, okay? So I'm gonna be thinking about the word playful right now. Okay, now I'm gonna think about anger. I'm really angry. Right? <laughs> Where did white little tank go? There it is. Sometimes they fall out. Okay, so we've got just the graphite. Oh, this side, sorry. So we've got just the graphite that activated the canvas. I hope you guys can see this. We've got some China marker with anger and we've got some China marker that's just kind of playful. Some little curly cues, playful. Doo -doo 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 -doo. We're just not thinking, we're just drawing, right? We're just mark making. Okay. Then because it's one of my favorite tools, I grab my thick marker because it's fun. And I go, I step back, I step away. I take a look at it and say, okay, so we're just gonna do a marker over a napkin and over a napkin. So here I go. Then I might step away, look at it for a minute, go, oh, what a mess. But it looks fun. Okay. Then I might say, hmm, I'll put something over here. Like I said, I'm just playing and just making. Then I'm going to take a piece of black charcoal. Um, charcoal. charcoal mixes really, really well with gesso. So now I'm going to go in with some charcoal. Might use charcoal. Oops, I got to go over here. I might use charcoal on the side, okay? And also the point of the charcoal. Okay. 
Big math, big math. Now the fun part. Oh, sorry. This is usually the point where I get an empty jar with some black paint and water. I take my large paintbrush and again, I'm not thinking. I'm holding it at the very end and I'm gonna make some marks. Don't think, just make marks. <laughs> okay. I may decide to dip my rose in some black paint. My dried flower. Doesn't matter, it washes up as water based. Okay, so I'm taking my tools that I made out of twigs and I might make some marks with that. Or some polka dots. Just to play, remember we're playing and experimenting. Just seeing what different tools can do, what kind of marks they can make. Okay, I'm going to take a second and wipe up the floor because I've spilled a tiny bit. Okay, now this is the period where I would really step away and often sit down and really just live with it for a while. Just look at it, just live with it. Because I kind of want it to dry. The charcoal will still blend in with the, the, the gesso paint and maybe make some gray areas. But I want to just kind of look at it now. I'm out of the free mind of just making marks. Now I'm kind of looking at composition. I'm kind of looking at what's interesting, what do I want to keep, what would I like to get rid of? So at this point, I would usually have a hair dryer and I would probably be drying it. I'm not going to do that today. We'll just take a minute. Sorry, guys. Sorry, guys, I figured the doctor would call today and he did. Okay. Okay, so we're taking a minute and letting that dry. What do you think is the next step? Does anybody have an idea? Colored paint. Sorry? Colored charcoal. Colored charcoal. Colored whatever. Some nope. colors. We're working with black and white at first. Okay. Just black and white at first. We're going to go in and erase areas that maybe we don't like or parts of areas. We're going to play with going in with white, going back in with black. We start with black and white. 
light and dark. So this is where we probably pick up a paintbrush paintbrush or a sponge brush and start playing with erasing and re erasing and filling in, erasing and filling in. We also talk often about veiling, veiling a piece, which means that we're kind of wanting to see what's underneath. We're wanting to see some kind of movement underneath. So that can be veiling. Or we're putting the gesso on quite thick to completely hide something, okay? So here we are making decisions. We're deciding what we like, what we don't like, right? Okay, so now you're getting to see that you have some black areas, some white areas, and some gray areas. So then I would normally sit down for a little bit, look at that mess that I've created. I was thinking in the second stage, but not really thinking, you know, making some decisions, looking at it, seeing what I like, what I don't like. So now would be the time where I say, oh, the gesso is still damp. Where's my screwdriver? Thank you. 
guys we're still playing we're scribbling scratching this could all get covered up in white we don't know yet we're still just playing and experimenting now i might grab a graphite stick just because why not right might say, oh, a bit more graphite You have to be willing to free up, loosen up, and just play. Just so you want to know, the feedback from Don Valley Art Club looks like they may move on a fundraiser for Ukraine. Wow, nice, Ava. That's fantastic yeah. news. Thanks, Ava. Yeah. Okay. Now, this again would be a time where I really sit back and look at it. Now, what do you think the next step is? Mm. I just got to this group again. Come on, take a guess. Okay. Uh, color now? Yes. <laughs> <laughs> now let's have some fun with color. We've done a lot with black, white, thinking, not thinking, veiling, covering up, having some fun with it. Now we're gonna just throw in some color to see if it inspires anything. So I'm gonna use my beloved tool, my little spatula end. I'm gonna grab a color. What color do we feel like today? Um, I'm going to grab blue because you guys can see it from the back. So I'm going to squeeze out a bit of acrylic blue on my tool. If there's any left in here. Nope. Okay. Hey guys, we're going with purple. <laughs> So we're just putting some fun purple, or we can mix up paint, obviously, and then skip, scrape up the color. But I'm just using right out of the tube for the demonstration. OK. And again, all we're doing is making marks, right? We're just making marks. Okay. So we've got a bit of black, white, gray, We've got a bit of color happening. Now we can have some real fun with white. So we can grab some white China, China marker or white, um, yeah. I know you guys probably wanna see this fun thing work, but it's probably so dried out that it might not. But this is a paint pen, a white paint pen. Ah. Right. 
marker on these okay. So now I'm going to try some China mar white China marker or white uh, crayon or whatever. And we're still just making a mess. Just having fun. So when I step away, I might say to myself, oh, I really like that whatever happened right there. Let's just say I like it. I don't know if I do or I don't, but let's say I do like that purple blob. Then I might say, oh, but it needs something. What does it need? Maybe a bit of my fun marker. I'll make some moves, moves in the color. I might come over to this one and say, hmm, I don't really like what happened here. So I might take that away at some point, but I kind of like this blob but it needs something. So I might make some moves again and just have fun, just play. I might go back to this one. Yeah, that goes back to the last white mark where it just keeps going. Mm -hmm. I may go in with another brush. I may say, hmm. Orange would be fun. Can't hear you. Oh, you can't hear me, sorry. I might go in with some more white and again, start veiling some areas that I like or don't like. I might go in with another color of paint and play with some more color. So this is where I would just live with it and look at it for a while, decide what I wanna do with it. I love working with gray. So I think I'm gonna go in with a little bit of gray. Let it's dried out. So I'm not gonna do that. I'm gonna go in with yellow. No, that's gonna to be too eastery. I'm going with dark green. If it's not dry. Oh. I find that those Desiree's bottles are very poorly designed by TriArt. I know. And they dry out very quickly. They do. They're frustrating. So I try to buy tube almost all the time because yeah. they dry out. So now I'm going to go in with probably burnt umber or whatever. So I picked just another color just to demonstrate some more. And again, I'm using this tool that I love, right?
I might again go in with some charcoal right now and just do some, some work on top of the colors of paint that I put in. I'd like to ask a question, Jan. What yeah. is it about multimedia that, or mixed media, sorry, mixed medium, that you really love? Why do you choose that above straight acrylics, abstract, or something else, watercolor abstract? Because it's so challenging to make a mess. It mm -hmm. completely freed me up from mm -hmm. drawing apples and oranges and mm -hmm. people's faces. And, you know, it freed me right up. But why mixed media rather mixed than? Media? Because it's very challenging. You're learning something new every day. Yeah. What works it... together, what doesn't work. Mm -hmm. You're always experimenting. You're always challenging yourself to go farther and farther. Mm -hmm. Um, like I said, using food, like that's crazy, right? Mm -hmm. But why mm -hmm. not? And over time, it gets easier, believe it or not. But at first, it is so challenging. Like right now, this is still the very challenging phase of the pieces, right? Mm -hmm. Because they just look like a mess. Mm -hmm. Some areas look kind of interesting. Some areas are ridiculous, right? So you're always going in and out of a piece with black and white. Right. In and out, in and out, making decisions. Do I like this? Do I like what happened? No, I don't really like it. Okay, I'm gonna cover it all up. Going mm -hmm. in again. Maybe mm -hmm. I'm gonna take out some masking tape and mask part of it. You're always, always learning, changing things until the piece literally says, I'm finished. Yeah. So it's hard finished. to know when you're finished, isn't it? It is. I, it usually takes me a couple of hours or days to finish a piece mm -hmm. because I'll, I'll go sit over there on the other side of the room where I was first talking to you and just stare at them for a while. Mm -hmm. And then I'll get up and make a move, like I said, a move mm -hmm. with one of the utensils, right? One of the tools. So we're still at the stage where things are pretty messy. Now, oftentimes I might take it right off the, the uh, vertical piece of foam core, by the way, this is foam core board, take it and put it down on the ground. And I might start dripping some paint on it, or I might start masking and filling in whole areas and then dripping water on it or scratching. So I might actually veil a whole section. Like, can you imagine if I came in right now and said, okay, here I go. And I grabbed some tape. I wouldn't use this tape, actually. I would use painter's tape. And I would say, okay, I'm going to mask off the whole area and paint it black. Just to see what happens. So I'm always experimenting. I'm always um. I'm always experimenting and playing, right? So I'm going to mask off an area and I'm going to paint it all black and we're going to see what happens. Ava, I didn't see it. Can you hold it up again? Oh, it's fabulous. Way to go. Keep going, keep going, keep going. Keep revisiting it and leaving it and going in and going out. Fantastic.
Remember our fun little bottle, squeezy bottle? So let's give that kind of a second or two to sort of dry. We're gonna scratch into it and then maybe we'll do some drip work. Drip work is can be done with paint and a wet brush or your squeezy bottle, right? So you can dip into paint, add some water, more water, and see some dripping effect. Or you can use this. We'll give that a second to dry a bit. Can you guys see how that composition all of a sudden got a lot more interesting? Mm -hmm. Can you see that? Okay, good. Now, I wouldn't say it's anywhere near finished, but it got a lot more interesting with a solid area, right? Now let's have some fun with dripping. I added a bit too much water to the gesso. So it's a little bit too runny for my liking, but it's okay. It's all right. I would have it less watery. Again, I would sit and just live with that for a while, see if I like it, what areas I like, what I don't like. I don't really love this side of this piece. All of a sudden I've decided I don't like it. I don't know why. I just decided I don't like it. So I might make a little bit of a thicker um, area and I might make that all black or white or a color. I don't know, but I've decided I don't really like this end that much. But I kind of like something that's going on there part of what's going on there. I definitely like something that's going on here with these drips. I'm not happy with any of these drips really. So I'm probably gonna eliminate them all. None of them turned out the way I wanted. That's okay. But what happened here is kind of interesting. So I think I might mask off the piece there or I might even mask off the piece there. 
So I'm making decisions now. I'm deciding what I might do and might not do. And again, looking at scratching and stuff. So I'm going to go black, back in with black. And I'm going to try to erase some white. But it's okay. It doesn't matter what mistakes you make. Sometimes the best mistakes are amazing. So don't worry about mistakes. Just keep going in and out and in and out. Jen, um, I'm just curious. Um, there are obviously different kinds of abstract artists. How do you define yourself as an abstract artist in terms of the story of abstract art? So I'm definitely not doing anything that's realistic in right. pieces, right? So they're all abstractions. I might be looking at a tree, but I'm not going to paint that tree exactly the way it looks. I'm going to abstract it. I'm going to draw it my own way, but it's influencing me. Um, as far as this, this is just pure abstraction, just thinking, not thinking, making decisions, making mistakes, rubbing things out, changing colors. Do, you know, sometimes I'll hate a piece and I'll completely start again and cover it up with white gesso and start again. But I have all that interesting stuff underneath, which, which kind of shines through. It kind of shows through. So would, your, would it be uh, described in terms of multimedia abstract as the media or what just I as- do, What I do is multimedia abstract. Yeah, so in terms of definition, that's what they would call you. Yeah, okay. yeah. yeah. Now, now that we're at this stage, let's see if anyone wants to make a decision about one of these pieces. What would you do to this one? Or what would you do to that one? Let's make some decisions. Linda, thank you so much. And anytime we'll get in touch. Linda has to leave early, guys. Okay, so do you guys want to unmute and then talk about what you might do? I'm going to say something quickly. Okay, um, go for it. Um, it's Anastasia. I'm finding this very freeing because even with my abstract work that I do, I have to have definite lines. I have to have... Um, a system in place. And I'm finding this very freeing because I sometimes just a simple thing is I'm, I'm say I'm drawing something and I'm specific about what I want, filling in the background and the negative space. I think that is perfect for that sort of thing. Um, and I can't get there. And that's why I said I wanted to do this because the freedom to create that, it takes a lot more because I get stuck because I have to have these exact lines. I have to have, you know, this straight or this circle or this done a certain way. Or I, even if I'm drawing like um, a spider web or something, it has to be an exact, you know what I mean? So it's limiting. And I'm finding that this is so free and so relaxing. So um, just, just do it kind of thing, you know? And um, I feel you get further with that method than how I sit down and create because I get stuck so often. So much like you, Anastasia, for 30 years. <laughs> and then I finally said to Howard, I'm just going to free up. I'm going to learn to play again and make a mess. And out of making those messes, I have created what I feel for me are masterpieces. They are I really, not in someone else's eyes, but in my eyes, they're masterpieces. But, but that's just part the, with learning to make a mess and freeing up and not caring. I don't care about these two pieces right now, right? I don't care. I would like to comment about why I find the terminology of precious and non-precious very inaccurate. 
Okay, describe what you mean by that. Okay, I can look at something where I did a drawing and eh, it's not important. I put it on whatever Instagram and people go, I love it. And I'm like, what are they talking about? It was just, you know, piece of whatever. And now I'm beginning, and you said, don't throw anything away. Now I'm beginning to look at it. Wait a minute. This is a mark that has it, maybe didn't go in the right direction for me, but, you know, um, that's okay. Maybe there's something there I can salvage. Maybe there's something that I can learn from it. Why does it have to be precious and not precious? Okay. I think that's I, very, I understand because somebody actually, I, I said I was doing visual journaling and the person described my visual art journaling as non-precious. And I was going, are you kidding me? That's the basis for idea making. Go ahead. Right, exactly, Ava, great point. Amazing point. Thank you. Not one of these pieces are precious to me yet, but I could revisit let's say this piece tomorrow, make some changes, all of a sudden I love it and it's precious all of a sudden. Exactly, I have to tell you, the person has a PhD uh, in art history and I'm going, oh God, she's doing her PhD art history terminology on me. Right, I hear you, I get that, I really get that. I just want everyone to realize it's a piece of paper with some marks on it and a bit of paint on it and some gesso. It's not precious yet until all of a sudden you do something and you fall in love with it and it becomes precious. But still to working at two pieces at a time. Sorry guys, that's an alarm. Um, I always say keep working on two or three pieces at a time because you don't want anything to become too precious before it's precious, right? You want to keep looking at it as it's experimental and playful. You want to keep revisiting it with black, white, color. Oh, we didn't even go in with some watercolor crayon yet, mm -hmm. did we? I made some marks with purple watercolor crayon. I'm gonna make some marks with um, a yellow ochre uh, watercolor crayon. Now I can take water and we'll see what happens to that. So watercolor, watercolor crayon is so vibrant. You may want to go in with the piece flat and not dripping, and that's fine too. And you may not want to add water, and that's fine too. Experiment with some watercolor crayons on black, on white, and on top of paint, paint colors. Play like you're a child in kindergarten. Just pretend you're a kid again, and you're just finger painting, and you're playing, and you're experimenting, and you're learning because every single day is gonna be an experience of learning, learning, learning. You're gonna have so much fun and you are gonna create some masterpieces. Trust me, out of the mess comes something fabulous because all of a sudden you do something you go, oh my God, I did it. And it just looks great. Don't worry about this stage. This is the beginning, the middle, and then there's an end. Just keep going in and out. 
in and out of each piece. Now, again, I'm gonna ask someone to make a decision about this piece. I'm not gonna do anything until you make a decision and tell me what to do with this piece. Come on, you guys. That includes you, Alan. Somewhere, somewhere I, I, I feel there should be a nice red spot somewhere. Uh, red, I don't know, maybe just uh, a paintbrush of uh, splashed red paint. <laughs> I mask the whole top in red. No, it's too much. Not okay. too, not too much. Just it would like be too much. Okay. Yeah. So just somewhere some red. Yeah, just a splash, like okay. just a splash. Okay, let's see what happens. On the bottom, the bottom is less somewhere interesting. On the bottom, just yeah. Red? Okay. Yeah. Can I use my favorite tool? Yes. <laughs> No, I'm kidding. I'm kidding. <laughs> so I'm going to make a move. I'm going to wipe. I'm going to make a move, right? Wow. So what do we think? And probably get something else to like, uh, uh, rub it slightly and fade it off to the left into that open, sorry, like right above there maybe to um, spread it just not thick, but just like a splinter of it into that open area. Yeah. That's my two cents. <laughs> As soon as I put an area of something as strong as red, I might put two more small areas of red yeah. somewhere. Yeah. Usually but just like a fade, five. like a faded yeah. brush of, of it. I might put a dot of red up here, just so that the eye travels around that piece, uh, right? You want the viewer to look at a piece of art and you want to see their eyes looking all over that piece. Yeah. You don't want them to stand in front of it and just look at it. You want them to see their eyes going all around that piece. So yeah. that they're really observing that piece of work. And right now, they're not going to do that. They're going to go mostly here and there. Yeah. Yeah. So you want to do something sort of in three places to get them really moving, their eye moving around, right? Yeah. Okay. This piece needs some red. If it's, a <laughs> answer. if it's not a diptych, maybe it doesn't need red, right? Now, we didn't go in with pencil crayons yet. We didn't go in with chalk pastel yet. We're really still in the middle. We're in the middle where we might still go in with some white. We might still go in again and fix that black. We might change something and make an area of black. We don't know anything yet. This is where we're really gonna start making decisions. This is like the finals, so coming into the final stages. But the final stage can take days or hours. Don't rush, but just remember to, to leave it alone and go sit, watch a TV show and maybe have it beside you and be glancing at it and sort of subconsciously making just small decisions. Mm -hmm. Kind of live with pieces for a little while. Don't, don't do it all so fast. Take a little bit of time to walk away and revisit it. The piece on top is a piece that I do not like. It's actually upside down. <laughs> Okay, with this particular piece, I have made one of the biggest mistakes an artist can make. I've put an area of interest right here 
an area of interest right here, an area of interest right here, and an area of interest right there. You don't want to do that. That's a huge mistake because you've made it look like a hodgepodge of you don't even know where you want your eye to go. There's too much going on. So immediately, I would erase this. I'd get rid of it. Do you ever use fiber paste? Actually, do you like it? I actually find the texture of it really nice, especially if you want to take um, uh, charcoal or, or you know anything um, that uh, pastel y kind of flakes and stuff like that, or because the the grit, if it's not too smooth, it gives this nice effect. I'm gonna have so, to try it. Yeah, fiber paste is really nice to work with also on paper. And is it water-based? Yes, yes. Okay, cool. Yeah, yeah. Wonderful. So do you see how that changed a little bit? Yeah. And how it's a little bit more interesting for the eye to just kind of... Now, I'm not saying I love it yet. I'm nowhere near loving it. But I've whited out some area. Would I black out an area? I might put some more black somewhere too. I might go in with again, my China marker. Make some moves. See if I like anything. Just make some moves. <laughs> I may take a great big brush and make a giant move with black just for fun. Let's do it. just got a whole lot more interesting, didn't it? Yep. Something happened. What happened? Just an interesting oh, movement. Mark. Yeah. And then it also changes your focus on, on the piece. Right. Definitely. And what am I doing? I'm just playing, experimenting, and making moves. Maybe I'm going to go into this piece with my thick brush. Look at that drip that's in my collection. Look at that drip. Can you guys see that? Barely, but yes. It's, it's dripping so down. Yeah. I may want to create a second drip. Maybe a third breath. <laughs> Whoa, Don't be afraid. Just play. Oh, 
like I said, that's that's what I have a problem with. Um, the freedom of it. I just feel that things are supposed to be so structured and it also causes uh, causes me to hinder my progress when I'm working. You feel after watching this, Anastasia, that you could come here right now to my place and just play on this board. Do you feel like you could do it? Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Thank you. It's, it's it's more freeing, like I said. I it's it is. It's yeah. Just play. Get in the mindset. Sometimes I even watch a children's show where kids are just playing, and then I start painting. Because I want to get out of my adult silly brain that's all worried about life and life problems and the news and whatever, soap opera I was watching or whatever. And I just want to get into a playful mood. Yeah. So I am really hoping and praying that you guys learned a lot today, that you see the process of how something starts, how the middle takes place, and how you keep visiting, going in and out, until the piece speaks to you and says it's finished. Yeah. None of these pieces are finished, but they're, they're coming to be interesting. Yeah. This piece is probably the least interesting. But these two pieces are interesting to me now. So now I want to keep going in with pencil crayon or ink or whatever and color and keep going in and playing till it speaks to me and it's finished. I like how whimsical they end up being as well. I want to also say to you guys, I'm happy if you have my email and you're working on projects and you're getting stuck or you're wanting to talk through something, email me. I check my email like five, six, seven, eight, nine times, 10, 10 times a day. And I'll get back to you as quickly as I can. And we can share pictures back and forth and we can talk about a piece and see where it's going and what it might need. We can just think it through. Or it's a matter of just talking about it, getting off talking about it and going in and making some marks. But remember guys, white paint, white gesso is your best friend. You can cover up this whole thing and start again. But don't throw anything away because I might hide this for a week or two, pull it out in a week and go, I know exactly what that needs because I've had some time to just live with it yeah. or get away from it. This piece to me needs a little bit more work but it's almost finished. Like that is a very interesting piece, the beginning of a very interesting piece. I don't think it's going to take a lot more work for that to be finished, but it's going to take a little bit more work for sure. This one, a lot more work. This one, it's like very, very beginning. So we've got still a beginning, we've got a middle, and we've got close to an ending there. I would like to see what, like what you feel if they're finished because... I would be messing with that until I turn it home, um, till it's a real mess, <laughs> seriously. And sometimes that happens and that's okay. That's when you realize, okay, I've just made mud. So now I'm gonna gesso the whole thing and start again. And how did we start? We started with graphite pencil. We activated the paper or the canvas. Then we went in with some China marker. Then we went in with some, a long brush, a long paintbrush and made some marks, you know, just, do the process again. You've got, you're going to have a copy of this video. You're going to be able to watch it over and over and over if you want. And you're going to be able to talk to me whenever you want to. You've oh, got my phone number, I believe. Yeah. Huh? Yeah. We talk already, so yeah. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Feel free to ask me questions anytime. I don't mind at all. I'm happy to share ideas with people. And this is challenging, challenging work. It's fun. And I'm not going to lie to you. It's frustrating sometimes, <laughs> but just go with it. Just well, go like, with it and have fun. Like I said, I find it um, easier in a hard way because I've been taught that you have to have definite strokes. You have to have definite, define everything. You know what I mean? And make it look like something realistic almost. So that's freedom. <laughs> not having to, there you go see that's i i love that i need to get to that point where i'm i can feel freer with my work 
Now, a lot more has to happen on this side. As far as I'm concerned, it might have to be measured and fixed a bit and go in with some pencil crayon, maybe fix some of these drips a little bit because they're, you know, going everywhere on the bottom. Go in with some pencil crayon and stuff, but that's a pretty interesting piece. So I promise you that you'll see the results of all three of these pieces. Please, please. Of all of them. They may take a couple of weeks, but you will see them. Now, if you guys have any more questions, ask me and then we can wrap up. Do you find it easier to work with earth tones, the blacks, the whites, the browns and stuff like that versus colors? Because I see that you only use a, a splash of color every once in a while um, for the pieces that I have seen. I know I haven't seen all of your work, but yeah. Um, I like to work with color, but only when a piece is ready for color. I'm gonna pull out that purple piece, purple and blue. Remember this one? Uh, we can't hear you, we can't hear you. Remember side. this piece? Yeah. Okay, so there's a lot of pink, blues, purple, but this stayed black and white for a very, very long time. Okay. Okay. And then I started playing with some color into it. Do you, uh, when you decide to add a color, do you stick like with um, like say three or four colors and then go with that, like the shades of those colors or whatever? Cause that's what I, uh, with me, I tend to do that. Like I'll use 20 different shades of blue or whatever, or blues blues with a red hue or blues with a green hue or, you know, I'd stick with this, with that sort of coloring. I want to work with, if I'm working with a lot of blue, I want to go on the exact, exact opposite and go in with some orange or yellow. Okay. Okay. If I'm doing uh, reds, I want some green in there somewhere. Usually. Compl yeah. The complementary color. color. Yes. But that doesn't mean that beautiful compositions can't be all shades of one color, because they can. So it's just making decisions. It's deciding what you like. It's deciding what's fun for you and what's visually pleasing for you. Just allow yourself to like something and dislike something. Allow yourself to make mistakes. You saw me make mistakes. Who cares? I went in and I can fix it or change it. Just play. Out of that play, you will create beautiful pieces of art. Yeah, it's more free. Yeah. It. yeah. I find, I find, I'm finding it more freeing play, the way you play versus the way I play. That, and hopefully we can play together. We'll, when this whole crazy pandemic stuff ends, we can actually play together and do it on a large scale with large pieces of paper. And, and I can walk around and help you guys and, and really let you play and free up. We can have yeah. some real fun. I did a show uh, in 2016 where I had some abstract pieces. I'll actually post some of those photos so you can see what ended up coming up on our doorstop di um, thing. Good. I what can't I wait. I did some abstract pieces and a friend went behind and picked out what she saw in those pieces and did drawings specific. She was like, she was like me at first with, um, with how um, def definite lines had to be and things like that. And she's still like that. So when she went at my work um, and did those, so we have these, we did about six pieces but there was one in particular that um, I took a lot more photographs, two actually, that I took a lot more photographs of. I'll share them with you, but what the original piece was and what it ended up being, it was to total transformation because you look at it and you just saw colors blending into one another. And um, then afterwards you look at it closer and there was actual things that she picked out of those yeah. abstract um, images. Yeah. Yeah. 
Yeah. So I, I'll post, I'll try and post that before the evening's out so you can kind of compare. Okay, cool. Yeah. Um, now, I, I just want to say one last thing. Don't forget collage, guys. Maybe there's going to be some collage added to this, right? Maybe there's going to be some collage added to that. Maybe there will be collage added to that. Don't ever forget all the elements, right? Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. That we talked about. So dripping, splashing water, black, white, all the different tools we talked about. It can just keep going and going until it speaks to you and it says it's finished. But never forget collage pieces can go on at the beginning before you even gesso. Oh. Or it can go on at the end. Never Let forget that your oil pastels are your last, 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 last scribbling effect because it's okay. oil based, right? Because she okay, someone else, go ahead. Lynn. Someone else wanted to ask a question, I'll ask after. Lynn, was it Lynn that wanted to ask it, me something? It was with me. I just didn't hear what you said about the being the last, why they were the last. I missed that. Sorry. Okay. So at the beginning, when I was talking about tools, I was talking about pretty much all tools that work with water, graphite, uh, charcoal, all of that kind of stuff can work with water. Oil pastel is oil based. So it's the last thing you put on a piece. Because, because if, you, if I were to put oil on here now and decide I hate the whole piece and I want to gesso it, the gesso okay. can flake off from the oil. It's not going to adhere to the piece. So Got oil it. pastel is the last thing you're going to use. Okay. Any Thanks. other questions? Do when you use, um, when say you added a piece of paper, what do you adhere it to the paper, the other paper with? Do you use um, the gesso or do you use a, um, what do you call it? A paste, any sort of the paste, you know, like try, try out has, um, modeling paste or gel or whatever? Okay, I, I'm so sorry for not adding that in. I talked about textured gel. Mm -hmm. Whenever I am adding uh, any paper to paint or paper to paper, as far as um, um, collage, I'm using a medium matte, gel medium okay you use the okay. gel a um, matte gel medium and i'm sorry i didn't talk about gel mediums too much but the only gel mediums i really use is a matte gel medium and maybe the sand gel medium okay maybe a glossy gel medium because maybe part of a painting i might want glossy and i might okay. paint it over at the very end okay yeah sorry i didn't talk about gel medium that's real i'm really glad you brought it up because it is how you stick everything to everything yeah. yeah. Are we pretty much wrapped up, guys? I want to thank you all so, so, so much. This was really fun to, to show you. It was fun to watch you guys learn. Please tell me, each one of you, I would love to know how you liked the workshop. Did you learn something new? Yes. Yes. So okay. much. Okay, good. That's the main objective is that I've shown you something and given you some motivation to play. Susan, I, I, always, talking. I always like watching another artist's process um, and what they do and what they find fun. Um, yeah. You know, because everybody's process is different. Everybody's um, uh, journey is different to get to, you know, to that point where someone likes their work and stops to look. and when someone stops to look, you've accomplished what you set out to do. Even if someone asks you a simple question, what did you do? Or uh, why did you use that color? That means right. they stopped to check out what you did. Right. So yeah, that's, Susan, that's always good. Susan, you haven't said a word. Did you learn anything new today? No, I've, I've learned lots actually. I've yeah. asked a few questions along the way. I just sold something in the break and then I've just I've just been using markers and crayons. It's pretty crazy, but it's, I agree. It's just, I'm not used to doing anything so free. I'm not really used to doing art. So this is very Are you good. willing to show us the mess you made? Oh, sure. I definitely good. show us your mess. I, I, the top corner I left on, it was watercolor. And then I just did a whole bunch of other 
crazy marks. Oh, wow. It's already started. <laughs> there you go. Wow. That's, awesome. That's great. Did anybody else play during this or did you just really pay attention to me? Pay attention. I paid attention. Okay. That's Lynn? not anything. Oh, it was just the Ukrainian flag. I thought okay, cool. at the beginning. Adam, did you want to say something, hon? Um, I just want to say thank you, Jan. I mean, this has been fabulous um, and totally inspiring. And I love the freedom of it. I was, I said, I, I told one of our colleagues on our, our messaging app um, that there's the kind of like Tao of Jan moment here with all of this. Like it feels like a kind of wisdom, a kind of meditative thing about freeing ourselves from expectation, about being in the moment, about letting our letting ourselves just trust what we're doing. And I think that's such a wonderful kind of energy to bring into your work. And, and especially because, you know, I, th I think one of the things that is so exciting is that you're bringing that energy and all the skill and technique of composition and understanding of form that that you gained through, you know, many years of insight and work. So fabulous, bravo. Please, thank you so much. And please understand guys, I never go in with a plan. None of, none of my pieces are planned. I think it I need to take that attitude happens. more. Yeah. Pardon? I think I need to take that attitude a bit more. Yeah. None of my pieces are planned ever, ever. So I just play. Okay, guys. Thank you. Amazing. Thanks.